Hi, my name is Vincent Simone. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to avoid pushing your one-handed backhand and ultimately hit the shot with some power. Let's begin. So, we no longer refer to the setup for a backhand as a turn. It's a coil. And I'm gonna show you how to coil so that you can create massive amounts of energy with very little effort. Notice that when I turn, the butt of the racket stays in line with my belly button. This is going to allow us to have what we're going to call a no swing backswing, okay? Or a no backswing backhand. So by doing this, all we're doing is coiling our body and it's essentially moving like a pencil, okay? We're just rotating our hips onto our toes. And now what we want to do is get more than sideways because when we go to hit the backhand later, we are not gonna be able to open up, okay? So we wanna turn our back to the net until our front shoulder is underneath our chin. Now racket positioning. We're gonna change the grip with the left hand on the throat of the racket and I'm not pulling the arms back. And essentially we wanna get L for leverage, the letter L position. We also want this arm to be bent. This arm needs to come up in order to keep the racket face from opening up because this is dangerous. Tucking it in here is gonna cause you to hit to the sky, push, you know, scrape, hit slice on your backhand. So it's very important that you raise this elbow as well. So we've got multiple letter L's. We've got a letter L here, a letter L here. These make a letter U basically, and this right here is our other letter L. So once we've established that, this is our coil. We also want to have our trigger finger up on whatever backhand grip that we're using. Now, once we get more than sideways, we need to initiate the swing. On the one-handed backhand, we cannot get lazy and go and drop the racket face below the hand. What we need to do is move our body like an elevator and get down to the height of the ball. So we're gonna keep our back as straight as possible and feel like we sit in a chair. When we go to do this, we shift our weight to the outside leg, delay the step with the toe, and then when we go to step with the front foot, we go heel the toe, sit in a chair. Now from here, it's so, so crucial that I keep the racket face above my hand. And notice how I'm still in the letter L for leverage position. So at this point we've coiled and now we've gotten down to the height of the ball and we're gonna go now into the hitting phase, okay? What you've been waiting for. Now from here, I need to drive the racket forwards leading with the butt cap. At this point, my arm is gonna straighten out. To contact point, it's very important that for one, we keep the wrist up in this position, L for leverage, and two, we fully extend our arm. On this shot, your power is going to come from the amount of radius that you can cover. The greater the distance, the better, and the best of the best of all the rest, they get as much distance as possible. Now from here, we want the backhand to go up, and we want to finish in the air the armpit position. We don't want the one-handed backhand to open up like a door, okay? And have a bravo finish. And I'll get to that in a second where people think that opening up is the right way to finish, but it's really not and I'll tell you why. But essentially, we wanna swing up the hill and finish high. And notice how I still have this letter L position. When we hit, we wanna stay down. We don't want to pop up until the ball has left our strings. And what we're going to do is spread the wings. Notice how my non-hitting hand is not just doing nothing. We're going to spread the wings and drag in the back toe in order to fire our hips. And when we finish, we need to have both arms up and out. The reason we do this is to help with ball striking, staying sideways, and also our balance. Because if we forget about the non-hitting arm, 
it's a lot easier for us to over rotate. Think about it like you're on a surfboard. You most likely will never see a surfer just surfing with one arm up because he'll most likely or she will most likely fall in the water and become shark food. They're going to eat waves. So you got to treat your backhand the same. So spread the wings and extend both of your arms. Now let's go to the finish phase. Okay. Like I said before, a lot of people, they have a Bravo and they see players on TV. It looks like they're, you know, opening up and, you know, kids and maybe club players, they see this. So they start hitting like this and they start opening the one handed backhand like a door or they're like Jesus. And they just woke up on Easter Sunday and they're, you know, like they're moving a rock and coming back to life. They're moving the tomb. What is happening is that the players are hitting so fast that you are seeing them build in their recovery to the swing. But if you watch closely, all of them at contact point are sideways where we don't open up until the ball has left our strings. And then we go and open up. But if this isn't explained to you, a lot of people just think that they open up before, right? You don't want to finish like this. Okay. It's okay to go to that position after, but it needs to be a byproduct of an amazing swing beforehand. Hey, if you like what you learned here, I recommend taking the next step and going into my online course because it takes what we've learned here and it builds on it and shows you how to hit with power and consistency for the rest of your life. I also do video shot analysis where you can send me videos of your strokes and within 72 hours, I will respond with a personalized video telling you exactly what is happening. This service is a quick fix to your fears and frustrations and will save you a lot of time and money that you otherwise would never get back. If you're interested in these services, click the links down in the description. Ciao.